Hey there, my name is Father Columba, pretend handshake. I hope you've been enjoying the channel. We certainly enjoy making these videos. I personally love doing them a lot. The fact that people listen to me, <laughs> nobody listens to me around here. That's yeah, not true, the brothers are great. And if they don't listen to me, Jerry will listen to won't you, Jerry? God bless you, I gave him a wee trim recently. I'm gonna stop there, because you might notice from the other support videos, he's about the same size. <laughs> it's because I recorded them all at the same time. As you know, everything we produce is totally free to access. Yay! That's my favorite price, right? Free. But it's not actually free to make. If you want to make good stuff, it costs money. The equipment, the support staff, the plant food, the snacks. You don't spend your money on snacks. Don't be silly. I'm being silly. You're not being silly. So everything we produce is free for you to access and we are Definitely gonna, we're totally committed to keeping it that way, but it's not free to make and your support is indispensable in, in helping us do that. If you haven't already, could you consider becoming part of our support team? Thanks for considering it. If you are interested, just click on the link below in the description box or go to calledtomore.org. So, um, shush, shush now. <laughs> so there's two, two of our biggest feasts, right? As Catholics, Christmas and Easter. And in both of them, especially in Christmas, we see God revealing himself as something adorable in the modern sense, something cute <laughs> and lovely. In Christmas, his, he, he comes to us as a baby. We also do this in Easter, don't we? Jesus is depicted as the Lamb of God. Of course, lambs are, are, are adorable. I just got to feed one. I feed a number of them, actually. I have some friends and they have some sheep. Some of the sheep, to say it nicely, they didn't connect well with their lambs. So my friends have had to uh, adopt these lambs and feed them three times a day, which is quite a lot of work if you've never done it, but it is adorable work because you just like these six little things and they come around your feet and they go nuts for a milk. Like, ah. So then we have this strange image that God, the one who, by this call to adoration, we should be acknowledging as God, humbles himself to become this tiny, helpless little thing. I mean, lambs are, they're pretty helpless, although they can walk straight away. So Jesus presents himself this way. And I wonder if some of it in these two great feasts of what he's trying to stir up in us is this, this adoration, this natural affection of the heart that we, at least normally, most humans have for beautiful, cute little things. And to bring this home, I have a special guest. I have a special guest today. Are you ready? Okay, now, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a she. We don't have a name for her yet. And she may not be staying here at the friary. Hello. She's very chilled out at the moment. So got, I'm going to call her Claire just for the sake of uh, having a name. So this is little Claire. Father Jacob found her down the road and she followed him home. I had actually been praying for a cat, of course, as you do. I'm a big cat man, I like a wee cat. And she had burned her back paw. I'm not sure how that happened. And she had worms and she had cat flu and various other things. She's about eight weeks old. Obviously, she came from a good family. She's been very loved and held and she's no problem getting... Uh, being held, but absolutely adorable. Not everyone is a cat person, I know that. So maybe this image doesn't work for you, but it definitely works for me. It is like the most popular type of video online, right? Kitten videos. I made one just there a minute ago. She got stuck. It was rather hilarious. But there's something about the way little baby things are made and the way we're made that we respond with just like, oh, you're just so lovely. Well, what I want to suggest to us is to be attentive to how your heart feels when you are spending time with a kitten or a puppy or a newborn baby because most of us will respond with that kind of modern sense of thinking oh my gosh you're adorable you're so cute and we just i could spend endless time with said cute thing right and our hearts can be really moved and get tremendous affection for these little things. And that's natural and that's really important so that, for example, parents make an incredible bond with their babies. And that there's something in God that he wants to evoke that in us as well towards him. I think that's why he gives us these images of himself as a child and as a lamb. 
that he, he wants that our hearts would be as united and bonded in affection with him as they would be and more for something adorable. So how might this apply then in your prayer? Well, what's the level of affection you have for Jesus when you pray? Maybe it's not at all. It's like, well, I've never really felt affection. <laughs> Are you supposed to feel affection? Yes, you're supposed to feel affection for Jesus. You may not have felt it yet, but that's not, it's not even the goal. But it's, it's something to help us on the journey. We're supposed to, as Scripture says, and as Jesus confirms, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all of your strength. Okay, and love, not always, but often, has a lot of affection, a lot of emotion to help it and strengthen it, right? So what's your level of affection for Jesus in prayer? Let's say the most you've ever had. Okay. And then think of who is the person or thing you have most affection for in the world other than Jesus. Maybe you have a child or a grandchild. Maybe you have a pet or somebody else who you just feel this tremendous, at times, upsurge of like, oh, compassion and connection and affection and love for them. God would love is that we would have at least that level of love and affection for him. We would find him at least that adorable. And to know that he is at least that adorable. Like that's, just, by at least I mean, that's where we should start at the, that experience of the greatest affection that we've had. And go, okay, so that's really possible in my connection with God. That's to be desired and sought and then far, far beyond it. Jesus is the adorable one. He is the beautiful one. He is the lovable one because he is love and there's nothing more lovable than love, than one who would love you. I find this really helpful in my own prayer because it can just remind me, it's like, oh yes, okay. It's really okay to have great, great love and affection for Jesus. And I was doing this, you know, after hanging out with Claire a bit and it kind of reminded me like, wow, the tremendous affections when I was younger, we had, we had cats in the house. And to remind myself of that then when I was sitting then in adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, I was sitting in front of him and I was kind of going, oh, wow. It would be a terrible thing if I loved a cat more than I loved you, Jesus. It'd be a terrible thing to love Claire and feel more affection for her than I do for you. And right then I started to, to kind of give myself permission to feel more love for him, to let that open up. We're supposed to pray with our whole being, We're supposed to give God our whole being, not just our thoughts, not just our time or oh, I'm going to say a few things, not just giving him our words. We're supposed to give him our very being. And part of that is our affection. And it's a very, very dear part to him. Things tend to get very real for us, don't they? When we feel something in a situation, it could be fear. Like, uh, so stuff suddenly becomes real. Or love, or tenderness, compassion. God suddenly becomes real for people. Sometimes not when they understand him or understand that this makes sense, but when they feel his love for them. So brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you to not be afraid to really adore him, to find him adorable, and to seek out ways to contemplate how adorable he is, to think of him as the Lamb of God, this newborn lamb, just beautiful, lovely, innocent, joyful thing, which sees you and just oh, comes towards you straight away and jumps into your arms. And then, what does that feel like? To think about that in your prayer, or to think about him, in Bethlehem as this tiny baby seeing you and giving you maybe the first smile. Well, I mean, maybe his first smile is, smile is for Our Lady, but that he recognizes you and he, he wants to be held by you. How beautiful would that be to think God would want our affection. God would want to be with us, to be held by us. He wants our love in a beautiful, innocent, childlike way. This is part of our prayer. This can be part of our prayer. And it is a very beautiful human part of our prayer. And it can go then beyond that because God will bless that and he will unite your heart more and more to him if you will say yes to this. So there you go from me and from Claire. Bye bye. Bye bye. She's gone to sleep, I think. Except the ears are obviously open, but the eyes are closed. We do a little close up here. Let me see. Oh, look at this. Is that about it? Oh, there you go. There you are. Yay! Ta-da! She doesn't mind the light. She's a natural.